We begin our report on Capitol Hill. The House is back from summer break with just 11 working days to pass spending measures and prevent a government shutdown. Senate leaders have put the task of passing a package on House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who faces a list of demands from a group of conservatives in his conference. And on his first day back from recess, McCarthy announced he is directing a House committee, more than one actually, to open an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes has more. Today, I am directing our House committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. The announcement was a reversal for House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who just two weeks ago said he would not launch an impeachment inquiry unless he had the votes for it. We will go wherever the evidence takes us. But McCarthy was facing mounting pressure from conservatives, who threatened to sink his speakership if he didn't act. Mr. Speaker, you are out of compliance with the agreement that allowed you to assume this role. To lead the new inquiry, McCarthy tapped three House chairs who have already been probing the Biden family's foreign business dealings. A White House spokesman noted today House Republicans have been investigating the president for nine months and they've turned up no evidence of wrongdoing. Democratic leader Chuck Schumer. I think the impeachment inquiry is absurd. The American people want us to do something that will make their lives better. Back in 2019, McCarthy warned his predecessor, Nancy Pelosi, that launching an impeachment inquiry into President Trump without holding a vote first would, quote, create a process completely devoid of any merit or legitimacy. But with his party divided, any vote today would likely have failed. Right now, I'm not convinced that that evidence exists. In the Senate, several Republicans were skeptical today that the inquiry would go anywhere. But House conservatives argue the move will give them access to key family documents they don't have now. There's not been a single subpoena to a Hunter Biden bank account or a Joe Biden bank account. Until an impeachment inquiry commences, that's not a jurisdictional possibility. And Nancy Cordes joins me now. Nancy, walk me through again how the impeachment inquiry is related and tied to this issue of government funding in terms of what House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is facing from his right flank. Well, you're absolutely right, John, that it is tied uh, to government spending because uh, Speaker McCarthy was under increasing pressure from the right flank of his party over two key issues. First, government spending, they want to slash it, and second, an impeachment inquiry, they want to open it. And so uh, the calculation that he's making here is that perhaps if he gives them what they want on one front, they will be mollified and won't push him to do something that looks incredibly difficult to do, which is to somehow, in the next couple of weeks, manage to conjure up a spending package that will simultaneously significantly cut spending and also pass the democratically controlled Senate. Uh, the problem is, if, uh, if the early reports are to be believed, those conservatives are, are not mollified. They say, great, we wanted an impeachment inquiry, glad you started it, but we still want spending cuts, too. And now to focus just on that spending question, people are going to hear a lot about a continuing resolution in the next couple of days and that the, how that's a sticking point for this right. group of conservatives that's given the House Speaker trouble before Explain uh, briefly the, the, the continuing resolution, the mechanism, as a Hill reporter. I know you could do that, but also sure. what their position is, this group uh, among Republicans, relative to that spending measure. So a continuing resolution is simply a fancy language for a short-term spending bill, essentially a patch, if you will, to keep the lights, lights on, to keep government funded at the same levels that it had been funded for the previous year because you don't have all of your spending bills, your appropriations negotiations done yet in order to uh, have a vote on spending levels for the entire next fiscal year. And so because Congress is still working through that, they need to um, basically pass this patch for a, 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 a certain period of time, maybe a few weeks, maybe a couple of months, while this appropriations process finishes up. Normally, 
that is uh, not a, a, a difficult or controversial process, but because uh, House conservatives are saying to Speaker McCarthy, hey, look, when you became Speaker, you told us that you were going to uh, slash spending, and we believe that. And if you don't get it done, if you don't get it done now, in fact, we might try to take away your speakership. That puts McCarthy in a very difficult situation. And because he is key to this whole process, if he's in a difficult situation, then everyone in Congress and here at the White House is in a difficult situation, too. And Nancy, as I run out of time here, I want to ask you about the White House. President Biden worked with McCarthy on the negotiations over uh, the debt limit. And they were able to work together, even though McCarthy was saying things in public mm -hmm. that might have uh, been considered offensive by some people. Now that McCarthy is, is starting impeachment proceedings, are they going to be able to work out something? Does that change the nature of, of negotiations? I don't know that the impeachment proceedings will be as much of an obstacle as uh, will the fact that McCarthy uh, already negotiated with President Biden six months ago. And now if he tries to come back to the negotiating table and say, hey, you remember everything we agreed to before? Well, it turns out that's not good enough for my right flank. I want to reopen all of those negotiations. The White House is going to say, how can we trust that we can ever negotiate with you in good faith and know that those deals are going to stick? Nancy Cordes at the White House, breaking down the White House and the Hill. Thanks, Nancy. <laughs> You're welcome.